Yeah. Oh, catch my breath. <sighs> okay. Let's do this again. You and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors. Welcome to Anu Green. My name is Anu and I make videos from the province of Alberta in Canada. Just in case you are seeing my face for the first time. My name is Anu. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. And I want to say a special thank you to all the new subscribers on this channel. Um, I know I said thank you in my previous video. Or oh, by the way, if you haven't seen how to make coconut shrimp, I'm going to link it here or here. So you guys can see it. I know I said thank you in that video, but I just want to say thank you again to all my new subscribers. And uh, for all my old time subscribers, thank you guys so much. Thank you to everyone, both old and new subscribers. I mean, uh, and for all of you that watch my videos too, um, whether you've subscribed or not. And if you haven't subscribed, it is free. Trust me, it's free. <laughs> Just click on subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you can know the next time that I drop a video. Uh, I do food recipes and I do story times for now and this channel might evolve into, you know, various wonderful things. Just uh, stick with me and you guys are the real MV MVPs for watching my videos every time. I mean, who subscribes and watches a random weird girl that does food recipes that we've seen on other channels I mean yeah and she tells story times she shares the word of God she preaches sermons <laughs> but you guys did and I am so grateful for every one of you thank you so much God bless you and yeah so today if you guys have and have noticed I am serving you like African you know I made this hair myself. Can you believe that I made this hair myself? I can't believe that I cornrowed my own hair and the lines are this straight. I know they're not perfect, but I, I, I'm kind of proud of what I did. Yeah, I'm so happy. So yeah, and in case you notice any like bump on my lip, it's because I have a blister around here and I'm, I hope I did a good job of trying to try to hide the blister. But in case you see anything bumpy in my lip, it's because my enemy <laughs> was not feeling well last week. So instead of the illness to manifest like they tell us, it comes as a blister. Yeah, so uh, today, I hope I'm not forgetting anything else that I wanted to say to you guys before I go into the story for today. But if I remember, I would say it. And uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, one thing I wanted to say is I know that a lot of YouTube videos they tell you to do to subscribe, turn on notification bell, like, comment, share, a ton of things. But today I ask you to just do one thing to this video. If you want to like, like, if you want to comment, comment, if you want to share, share, if you want to subscribe, subscribe, if you want to take your subscription to another level and click on the notification bell. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, so just do one thing for me today. One out of those numerous things that we ask you to do on YouTube here. Okay, thank you. Okay, so today's story. Today's story is, and I thought I would share this story because, you know, when I, uh, when I shared the previous story that I uh, shared about uh, um, fear and everything, it kind of jogged my memory and I remembered this one that happened to me because it, it wasn't on the list of stories that I wanted to share with you guys but I remember and I'm like how can I ever forget this experience in my life. So it happened that I was in, um, so in the university I went to on Labisi on Obanjo University in Nigeria for my first degree. And um, when most people hear, I mean, those most Nigerians, when they hear that, oh, you went to 
uh, Olabisi Rabanjo University, which was formerly called Ogo State University, people find it very hard to believe. And I always tell them that, look, you, your university education doesn't really make you. It is the foundation you had. So your primary school, those are the formative years of your life. Your primary school, your secondary school out is, is actually what makes you. And uh, I mean, people go to Unilag and UI. I see graduates of these schools. These are like the prestigious universities in Nigeria. And sometimes they're like, oh, did you actually go to that school? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what school you went to, yeah? But that was the school that I went to for my first degree. At Olapisi Onobanjo University, it is, that school is structured in a way that it, it's, a, it's a multi campus university, so like different uh, different faculties are located in different cities in Ogun State in Nigeria. And I think the aim was to kind of develop the state by you know developing different cities, you know. So, um, it I and I studied biochemistry for my first degree and um, I feel like when I tell you guys the stories you guys kind of know me you know <laughs> so I studied biochemistry for my first degree and biochemistry students spent uh, two years the first two years so a four-year degree uh, the, the first two years in a city called Agoiwoye and then this the last couple of years in Ikene so this uh, story time happened when I was in Ikene and I was in 300 levels so my third year in the university and uh, the way because of the way the, the that the school is set up uh, I mean it's almost impossible to have like hostels or on-campus residents because the school is you know scattered uh, across like different cities in the state so people would usually rent homes like you would rent a room or you would rent a house and you would share with you know you probably rent an apartment and share with your friends or your course mates you know or your siblings you know whatever worked for you or whatever your situation was so um i i don't know why i've been clapping since morning <laughs> so i uh rented when i was in Kenya, uh i rented a a room so it was a room that had a washroom a makeshift kitchen because that kitchen wasn't there originally it was built for me and I was the first student to ever stay in that house um, so I so I rented that room so it happened that on the first night no okay let me tell you guys um so the the house is a, it's a main house and then it has a, a boys quarters so and that boys quarters had two flats so there is there was a uh, two families that stayed in each of those two flats um, so and my room was kind of was downstairs right it was a story building and um, my room was downstairs kind of facing the boys quarters so uh, on the first day that I stayed in that room I mean I stayed for two years by myself in my own room in a I mean yeah and um, there was no issue <laughs> <laughs> so well, my on my first night, on my first night in Ikene in that house, uh, I, I went to bed, you know, I mean normally you would keep your eyes open and you know because it's a new environment, you've never spent a night here before and this is your new home, you know, but I just can't, kind of calmed myself and you know went to bed because like I told you guys before I used to be like a um, I used to yeah get scared <laughs> easily before but those are in the past in the olden days okay so I went to bed that night and as I was sleeping all of a sudden out of uh, out of my sleep I heard like a knock on my door so the door that was that that I heard a knock on was the wooden door of my kitchen so like I told you guys it was a makeshift kitchen so when you came to my apartment you would you'd get to the kitchen first uh, you open the kitchen door you walk into the kitchen and then you open the door to my room right um, so I heard a knock on my kitchen door and uh, I was like okay uh, what's the time I think it's like midnight right now um, who's knocking 
um and then i wanted to go but then i was like calm down calm down don't rush <laughs> so uh so i waited a little bit and i noticed uh, that the, the this person kept knocking and then they proceeded from the door to my windows so i had two windows uh one in front and one by the side uh so they proceeded to knocking on my windows and um okay and the knocking was pretty intense that like it was persistent um and guess what this person was asking for i'm gonna say this in my dialect which is yoruba it said the person said <laughs> what that means is and i'm gonna translate it on the screen it means uh young lady Please give me a matchstick. Hmm. This was the time that I realized that something is going on. <laughs> this was the time that I knew that yes. Okay, what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, who comes to knock on your door, on your window, and asks for a matchstick in the middle of the night? And it's not like they knew me or anything. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention who was knocking on the door. It was a mom and a daughter that lives in one of the flats of the boys' quarters. And I'd heard, like, it was later on that I heard that, you know, that the family had some issues, you know. But I hadn't even met this way. I think they saw me moving in in the afternoon. And that's how they knew that somebody was in this room, right? But you don't know this person from Adam, nothing, and then you have the gods and the evangelists come and knock on their door in the middle of the night asking for a matchstick. Who you, who you be? Where you come from? <laughs> Holy, so, I mean, that was, uh, it was pretty scary and they kept knocking and they kept knocking and they kept knocking. So these guys kept knocking and I was like, what is going on here? Um, yeah, it was a pretty bizarre night because, yeah, like I said, who wakes you up in the middle of the night? You, your first time ever in a house and they're asking for a matchstick, something as flimsy as a matchstick. And, um... You know what they did also that made me very scared because it, this was a pretty traumatic experience for me <clears throat> excuse me and i'm going to explain why it's, it was traumatic i mean you can all, all almost tell already why why it was traumatic um they then they because they continued knocking and no one was open and they knew i was inside there so they it was like mo mother and daughter so it was like mom the mom and her daughter they started peeping in through the, the windows thank god that i put the curtains up uh, before i slept that night i mean they could have easily used their touch light or something to you know peep and see who's inside but thank god i have my curtains up because i saw them trying to look into you know the crevices and the spaces that the, the curtain didn't quite cover and they were trying to see i mean and they kept saying see me a fumini gishana that means uh give me a uh, young lady please give me a matchstick and at some point i had to crouch i literally had to crouch in, in into a corner of the room okay so i had to crouch into a corner of the room where i felt they couldn't see me like an angle where i knew that even if they looked from anywhere through the windows they wouldn't see me oh lord and after a while they stopped uh, and i don't know how i slept that night but in the morning the landlord uh came and uh, he was asking me oh, how was your first night and stuff you know in yoruba and i was like well yeah this happened and i was trying to narrate it to him and he said yes he heard and that was when he began to say that yeah this family they had issues you know and, I'm, and that he was he heard everything that was going on in the night i'm like oh so you heard why couldn't you just you know these people already you know they have issues why couldn't you just sell them off 
and you know tell them off and you tell them not to disturb this new new student this new girl that just moved into this house i mean uh yeah so anyway that that was what happened that night very scary thing like who what what do you want to use a matchstick for in the middle of the night why couldn't you ask your neighbors that you knew already i mean tenants in the house that you that you're already familiar with you know you don't know this girl from anywhere and you just got it right to and the, the thing that also baffles me is that they didn't stop knocking for a long time they didn't stop knocking and they kept trying to see if they could look into the room no 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 i mean don't tell me don't tell me that say uh, well um that i'm being uh, what, what is the word now uh, yeah like I, I do i believe in african things but i for some reason i don't know what you guys think do you do you think that they were just they just needed a matchstick or was there something else to it i, I don't know anyway so this singular night my first night there in that house you know kind of made me i couldn't sleep in the house again and it, if i remember correctly i paid rent up front so i couldn't move out of that house but i couldn't sleep in it either so and th at this point i want to give a big huge shout out to my friends Fien Fonu, Titi, Ebum and you know I, those three girls they 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 were there for me especially Fien i'm still in touch with Fien i'm not really in touch with Ebum and Titi anymore but if you guys see this video at any point in your life shout out to you guys because i used to switch between <laughs> those three rooms until i moved out of that house I swear, but I spent most of my nights in Finn's room. Finn, God bless you. Like, and it was like intruding into her own privacy, but she would not even say a word. I would sleep in her room. You know, when it was like getting dark, like 7 p.m., 6 p.m., I would park my bag hmm, from the room that was paying rent for, that my parents were paying rent for. A room that was mine, I would, and I would go and leave or sleep in someone else's house. And then in the morning, I would you know, come back. I mean, how inconvenient was that? And that was just because of what happened that night. You know, and that happened for a while until I was able to move out of that house like a few months after. You know, and um, yeah, I don't think I ever slept in that room except for when my friends, I had a couple of friends, Shay and Tola, that came um, to Kenya. They were, we were all trying to transfer to medical school. <laughs> So they stayed in my room and uh, I think that those were the only times that I that I ever slept in that room after that experience. But after a while I got another room. But the thing I want to bring out here is, um, and before I say anything I'm going to read um, a Bible verse in from Psalms 27 from uh, verse 1. I read, the Lord is my light and my salvation so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble when evil people come to devour me? When my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Verse 3, now, though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Now, the angle that I'm taking this, or that I want to look at this is, um, I want to look at this from is, um, uh, you, you notice how I was going to different friends' houses uh, to sleep. I, I feel like that's how we are in life. Like when um, things happen to us in life or when people tell us things, like those people that came and you know, were talking in, my, in the middle of the night and saying things and knocking, those sounds kind of stuck in my head and I couldn't sleep in that room anymore. I feel like this is how we are in life sometimes when people tell us things that we are not they tell us this is who you are whereas that is not who God has made you to be and then you try to live in the shadow of other people just like I was going from uh, Finn's room to Titi's room to Edwin's room you know I feel like if we if we compare that to real life like trying to be other people when we have our own room, we have our own space, we have our own identity that God has given to us. You know, 
why would you why would you do that you know and the bible is telling us here that the lord is our light and our salvation why would we, you be afraid of what people say when the enemy comes and tells you things and you know makes you afraid you know and makes you crouch into a corner just like i was crouching into a corner that night you know what why would you bend or give into the enemy that way when god has said that you know he will be our confidence that even if we are attacked we will remain confident we will remain confident and you know verse 13 of that um, verse says that yet i am confident i will see the lord's goodness while i'm here in the land of the living wait patiently for the lord be brave and courageous yes wait patiently for the lord i feel like most of us or even yeah, i'm talking to myself too most of us need to um stand for what we what who we really are and how do you find out who you are you find you find yourself in the word of god the word of god is the original blueprint for your life <laughs> i can't tell you how much that my how much my life has been transformed by the word of god i mean heaven and earth was created by the words that god spoke and the original blueprint of your life is in the word of god find yourself in the word of god do not allow voices circumstances around you make you who you're not make you live a, a, a half standard life because i can just imagine now that i'm thinking back now you know that that, that life i was living then um for those few months it wasn't very pleasant because i would have to leave my house at 7 pm come back in the morning i mean and i was paying for rent in that place so you know this is my story here uh, today and um i i believe that you guys have learned one or, one or two things from the story and uh, even things I've not been able to mention I believe that the Holy Spirit will speak to you and expand his word in your heart and you know just for your life generally you know read that Psalm 27 if you have time um, read the whole of it you know it, it it gives you confidence you know about physical things spiritual things financial things every area of your life Psalm 27 is like a it's, it's an anchor in, in you know in, in God and um, yeah that's uh today's story uh, let me get if you guys uh, have learned one or two things if you want to comment like I said earlier if you're commenting comment and if you want to do more than one thing in this video if you want to comment like share uh, subscribe turn on your notification bell please do all of it but do at least one thing yeah thank you guys so much and um, I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.